What is going on, people? I hope you had a good summer. I've got some interesting stuff for you today, the start of a little devlog for a game I've made with this sand nonsense I've been talking about. My plan is to have a little playtest next week, so if you wish to help out, mark your calendars and I'll make an itch.io page in a Discord and post a video when it's ready. I'd appreciate it if you take a look. Thanks. This summer was filled with learning about how to not make a game quickly. The sand engine was supposed to be a quick detour from the sphere game that I was working on, but it has ended up taking almost a year of time. Each idea that I had required tons of dev time on the engine, so I would end up with a tool after a week and then try to use it to make a game, only to realize that I needed another tool to finish whatever effect. This led to a lot of wasted time on algorithms and engine bits that, while cool, were just these tiny pieces and massive game ideas that I had. Luckily, after some time, I identified that this was happening. I looked at some videos of people working in game jams and the type of games that would become the winners, and it seems like that the key was that they focused on only a single beat. Instead of trying to tell a story or have an hours long campaign and good visuals, they made arcade-like games. I found another YouTube channel named Continuous Delivery that talks about coding practices in large projects. It's more geared towards people working in teams, but he had a good video about what went wrong with Cyberpunk, where instead of only blaming management, he looked at the flawed engineering practices. The most useful piece of info he gave was this triangular diagram, claiming that you can lock one of time, scope, or cost, but the other two remain variable. This was important because I feel like I wasn't locking down a single one of these. I decided to lock down scope to the most bare bones game I could think of and see where I went from there. Taking a break from coding and looking at what I was doing from a vantage point led me back to this test that I made in January. Before I even made the sand engine work, I made this quick demo where you fought off little spaceships. Something about how the bullets looked kept bringing me back, so I decided I would focus on that. So here's the project, a super simple twin stick shooter with these good bullets using the sand engine. I want to create different phases for levels with downtime in between. Each phase will have enemies and a sand effect. It could be raining, some asteroids could fly by, walls could appear, things like that. Then I want to bring it to completion with sound effects on everything and some good music. I can already feel the feature creep, so for now I'm just going to focus on the bare minimum. You can move and shoot, and the enemies can do the same. It may not look like much, but the months that I spent on tooling have actually come back to help me. Because the code is so modular, I can just plug it back in and it works. For instance, I spent a while figuring out how to rotate the sprites. I never thought it before working in this discrete grid, but you cannot just rotate the pixels because some may end up on top of each other, leaving holes. Fixing this requires a proper render with geometry, so I made a software renderer following a BizQuit video. After many headaches, I can almost have any side style rotating around as I please, and they can even be destroyed at the pixel level. So while this is overkill for some of these simple sprites, I have the option to add obstacles like lumbering asteroids or a huge boss enemy. Another tool that I spent a while on was making arbitrary colliders from the world and tiles. This was for a game idea that really made me realize that I was going down the wrong path. It was a 2D fighter, but your heavy attacks destroyed the world around you. Some attacks made craters, while others cut the world in half. I actually got this working, but just talking about it makes me cringe with how much time it would have taken to actually complete. Maybe in a team of people working full time, but for my part time solo dev efforts there's just no way. This took up a lot of time, but now I can use this collider system in the new game for the obstacles and asteroids. Where does this leave me right now? Well, I have this little arcade game that I want to spread around for some playtesting soon. I hope to have it done by next week. I need to add a phase slash level system and some rough sound effects and menus. I also need to figure out how to make the player stand out in a health system that makes sense. If you wish to help out, keep tuned for next weekend, August 28th. I'll have a rough demo ready for an initial playtesting run, then each week I can make an update video and have another playtest until it's done. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next week.